Welcome back. Uh, let's look at a multi-period cash flow problem. This is an optimization problem. Uh, a particular company has $100,000 to invest in the first time period. They can invest uh, in these different investment instruments, uh, investments A through E. And they can also invest in CDs uh, each year, uh, which pay 6% interest. For these investments A through E, then we see when that investment is available, such as uh, year one for investment A. It matures in year four with a return of 1.4, so a 40% return. And then in a similar way for investments B, C, D, and E. Uh, so with this information, let's uh, lay out the, uh, the spreadsheet to do the analysis. So what I've, I've done is enter the starting and, uh, and maturing or ending time periods in these two columns. A is uh, 1 and 4, for example. And enter the return. And uh, we, the, the company wants to know how much to invest uh, or how much to invest in each of these uh, possible investments. They have 100000 to invest. They don't want to invest any more than 50000 in, in any one investment. Uh, so we can represent uh, what's happening here, say, with investment A, as that investment is available in time period 1. And so if we put a, a minus 1, it would be the equivalent of, uh, of saying that we're investing a dollar. A dollar is, uh, is going out from us. So it's being uh, spent or invested. It matures in year 4, and at that time, with a return of 1.4. And so I come out here to year 4 and put a 1.4 and that's for the investment A. So in a similar way for each investment we put a minus 1 on the year it's available and then put the return on the year in which it matures. And so we do that with all five of these investments. The CDs are available each year so a minus 1 in time period 1 matures in 2 investing in time period 2, minus 1, and matures, and, and so forth. Uh, okay, now let's put in a, a formula that would capture, for some amount invested, how much uh, we would be investing in that first year. So I'm going to put equals sum product and capture this column, comma, in this investment column. I want to, uh, to freeze that column so I can copy it in a minute and write parentheses. Uh, now if I go ahead and put some values in here so we can uh, see if our formulas are working, I'll just put uh, say $100 in, in each one. Uh, then we can see that with these investments in the investments that are available in the first period, uh, we'd be investing $400. Now we have a hundred thousand to invest, and we would obviously want to make sure that we're investing and in, in, in putting into the investment all one hundred thousand. And we'll see how to do that in a minute. Uh, for these investments, let's just copy this to this next cell, and you can see that it's uh, some product of this column that we're on, and then again the investments, and then let's just copy it to the other two time periods. Here in this uh, column J, cell J13, uh, represents the ending time period, and we want to maximize the money that we have uh, at the end of year four. For periods two and three, which are intermediate periods, so it's not the beginning, not the end, uh, the, we want to make sure that, that we don't keep any of that money. We want to keep it reinvested and so for these two cells, we'd want to make sure that their values are zero during the optimization. Uh, let's go ahead and, and pull up the, the solver and put in the settings. And so our objective would be for this cell here, our end of year four, that we want it to be the maximum possible. And we'll be changing the amount invested. 
let's add our constraints. One constraint is that the amount invested needs to be less or equal to this maximum that we want to uh, allow in any one year. Uh, a second constraint is that this first year investment needs to be equal uh, the amount that we have to invest. Uh, another constraint is that in these intermediate years that the uh, the value that we have is zero, meaning that we don't keep any of that money. We're not taking the money out for any uh, purpose during those intervening years. We'd want unconstrained simplex LP. Click on solve. Uh, we see that solver found a solution. Say OK and then we can see the amount that we'd be investing. You see we actually invest in all five of these investments. No investments in the CDs. We use all and invest all $100,000 available. Don't keep any uh, in between in those uh, intervening years. And at the end we'd have $147,943. That's it. Thanks. See you next time.